They say judging is the same as condemning. It's not. You walked over here and said, show me what I'm doing wrong. That means what? Judge me. Judge me according to what the Bible says. If I'm doing something wrong, I need to, I need to change. You know what I'm saying? If we're doing something wrong, we go to the Bible to tell, to, to tell us whether it's right or wrong. Right. That's the ultimate authority. We go in the Bible. Oh, I've been committing adultery with this woman. God says, don't commit adultery. Guess what? I have now been judged by the scriptures. And whether a man is doing it or not, I've been judged by the scriptures. And now guess what? I have the opportunity to change. But a lot of our people get so heightened in their emotions that they don't see that correction is judgment. We have to correct one another. Otherwise, you know what happens? Police correct us. Then our children correct us. The other man correct you. You know what I'm saying? We have to get out of this mindset of, that's Tupac, the mindset that you have. Only God can judge me. That's Tupac. That's not in the Bible. The Bible all through it. First Corinth, in, the, in the book of 1 Corinthians, answer this question. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Answer this question. Did Paul go to Corinth to judge? He did go there to make corrections. Did Paul go to Corinth to judge? Did Paul go to Corinth to judge? I don't know. Thank you for the honest answer. Thank you. Go to First uh, Corinthians two fifteen, and then we're gonna jump to First Corinthians five to see what that. What, I know you have. Yeah. Your honesty yeah. is not the issue. Your rebellion against what God said is the issue. I know that. So you've already known that you can't have your head covered while the Bible is coming out. This young man is not a pastor, but yet his spirit was. You know what? I do need to have my head uncovered. Even when you were teaching in the church, you didn't have your head covered. I know that you no, didn't. I, no I, pastors I, did. Y'all never cover no. y'all head. But you see, you deem it you deem it fit to cover your head now because you just want to be rebellious because maybe we don't know as much because we didn't go to seminary school. I'm not I'm I'm just saying I came to the park. I didn't come to hear the word of God. You wanna know the truth. Listen. Okay? Listen. I'm just saying. Listen. I didn't come to here to hear the word of God. I actually just came to the park. Okay. You happened to be here. All right. It was a divine appointment. I'm here. Hey, you so I'm just, you wrote I'm that. Just, you wrote that. You wrote that in your book. You wrote that in your book. I didn't come to hear the word, but when I came to the park, I heard the word. Now, guess what? God sent you here, just like God sent us here. Because guess what? We originally wasn't even going to be over here. God said, nah, go to the bus stop. Read. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. But he that is spiritual, judge it all day. In order to be spiritual, what do you have to do? What is the spirit? What is the spirit? The spirit is God. He's the teacher. He, he that is spiritual judges all things. So what, what does that mean? He that is spiritual judges What does it mean things. to be spiritual? Those that are mature in Christ. Wrong. Give me, uh, it sure is. Dress right. I hope you dress for it. Give me John 6, 63. It's not. You see? You see that? You're the reason why she speaks the way she speaks. You're saying it's not spiritual? Read. Done. Tell the 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are light. So what does it mean to be spiritual? If you're following the word of God. We're following the word of God. So go back to 1 Corinthians 2.15. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. But he that is that, spiritual... That, that, listen, that wasn't a defense statement. The defense statement is no longer needed because I didn't defend myself against you. I just read the Bible. Read that. But he that is spiritual, judge it all things. So if I'm following the word of God, guess what? Like my brother Chris here, I can say, Chris, you need fringes. Chris, you already growing your beard, all praise to the most high. Chris, when the Bible's coming out, uncover your head. Chris, you got to congregate on the Sabbath. Chris, don't celebrate uh, Thanksgiving. Don't celebrate Christmas. Christ was not born on Christmas Day. I'm pretty sure you know that, right? Of course you do. You were a pastor. Then I got to tell Chris, you got to keep Passover. You can't keep Easter no more. You got to keep the new moon. Stop fornicating. Don't have sex with women and you're not married to them. All of these things are going to lead you into the lake of fire. But guess what? That's judging Chris. But now Chris has the opportunity to change so that Chris doesn't meet condemnation when Christ comes.
go to 1 Corinthians 5 and let's see what Paul was judging. Bring it out. Read verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. So there was fornication in the church of Corinth, right, Pastor? Read. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. Read. That what you have is father's wife. What law is that breaking? This is the New Testament, and he said there was fornication. What commandment was that? But that wasn't his neighbor's nothing. That was his stepmother. Okay, so what law in the Bible was he breaking? What law says don't sleep with thy father's wife? If it's that's your stepmother, it's not incest, but it's your father's wife. And there's a scripture in the Bible that says, don't sleep with your father's wife. Don't uncover the, the nakedness of the wife of thy father. Right. What scripture is that? You want to know why? Because like he said earlier, you have to admit this, you haven't been taught correctly. Right. They don't teach the Old Testament as a whole in seminary school. They do not. And you yourself know, if the Holy Spirit was supposed to bring all things to your remembrance you hit have went to leviticus 18 really quickly because the holy spirit would have made you remember that sleeping with your father's wife was a sin and that's one of the things of fornication that they did in the church of corinth in the new testament you should have known that read that leviticus chapter 18 verse 8 the nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not uncover go back to first corinthians 5. read we don't have to. You want to know why? You already admitted that your head covering is a hat. You already admitted that, so you know you're in sin. Read. First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. So this guy was sleeping with his father's wife. Didn't the Bible just say the nakedness? Thy like, father's wife thou shalt not uncover. Didn't it just say that word for word? That was fornication. What was the judgment for that? Yeah. Skip down to the judgment. Verse 9. <laughs> I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortionists, or with idolaters. But then must he needs go out of the world. Meaning, if you're committing fornication, you get put out of the church. So that's a law, right? And that was in Leviticus 18. So one chapter over with Leviticus 19 and 27, and it said, don't mar the corner of your beard. How come Leviticus 18 is still in play, but Leviticus 19 is no longer in play? Hmm. I love that sound. I love that sound. It's crickets. It's crickets. But we're not here to, to just bash you, bro. You know what we're here to do? We're actually here to do this, Isaiah 58 and 1. This is what we're actually here to do. Just like my brother Chris here. If Chris is faithful, guess what? Chris is going to come to the school. Then, then next thing you know, Chris going to be on the other side with a purple shirt on, rebuking people, correcting them, showing them where they're going wrong and how they should go right. Because we don't just sit here and tell everybody what they're doing wrong. We actually tell you what you should do to go right. We actually correct the problems in our neighborhood. Read. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. Cry aloud. Spare not. So we're supposed to cry aloud. That's why we speak loud. That's why a lot of times when black men raise their voice, what's the natural uh, reaction that a lot of people get when black men raise their voice? Don't they get offended? Why are you yelling? It's not that you say it, it's how you say it. Black men... Black men, every time we get a voice of authority, they always try to muzzle it. They always try to say, well, you shouldn't speak so loud. You shouldn't speak so rough. But what did the Bible say? Cry aloud. Speak loudly. Spare not. Don't care about nobody's feelings. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Lift up your voice like a trumpet, meaning be loud, like a man is supposed to be. Read. And show my people their transgression show our people what we're doing wrong 
That's why, that's why I know the spirit not with a lot of people. If you fall asleep when the Bible is coming out, spirit ain't with you. How could you fall asleep when the word of God is pressing in your ears? Read. In the house of Jacob, there's sin. We're supposed to show our people what sins they're committing. Like the smoking. We're not supposed to be doing that. That's why we have the yellowing of the eyes, which is jaundice, which leads to kidney disease. Yellow eyes is a sign that you have something wrong with your kidneys. And in due time, you're going to be in dialysis looking crazy. And dialysis long term makes strokes in the body. Are we wrong for that? Pastor, or are you sleeping? I can hear you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can hear me. I know you were sleeping. I, used, I watched you while I was standing there. Fell asleep mighty, my, mighty quickly for somebody who was, uh, you know, sober. I don't believe you're sober right now. See how, see how belief works? I don't believe you're sober. I don't believe you're sober. That's that. You're, you're absolutely right. And what did he read out of the Bible? Not to shave, right? Not to uh, cover your head when the word is coming out. To keep God's commandments, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to do those things just because you don't believe you have to. Okay, it's fine. But let it be known on this day, you were told and you were warned. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how we're men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth